Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Hello everybody to all my ninja mommies and ninja daddies. Welcome back to my channel, Ninja Mommy. So this week on Ninja Mommy, I will be talking to you about how to sleep train babies and toddlers using the no cry method. The reason I decided to sleep train Samara with no cry method is because I personally do not have the heart to let her cry it out. But if the moms out there who do use the cry it out method, that's all on you guys. It's your personal decision for your family and every family is different, every child is different. If it works for you, then yay. I am no one to judge. But I personally believe that bedtime should be happy time and the babies should go to sleep happy and smiling. I always tell Samara jokingly that her tears are like diamonds that you shouldn't be shedding them. Like, cause whenever she cries, like it like aches in my heart right here. And I just hate it. So I went the no uh, cry method. Okay, so currently Samara is 18 months old and this is how she goes to sleep right now. I get her ready for her bedtime routine. If you want to know what my bedtime routine is, you can check out my video, Babies and Routine and I discuss in detail what my bedtime routine is with her. So yeah, I get her ready for my bed or I get her ready for her bedtime routine and I put her in her crib. I say the sleeping dua to her. I say la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and I give her a kiss and a hug and then I say good night Samara and I walk out. Wait, what? I walk out and Samara like she just goes to sleep? Yes, yes, yes. So Samara just Plays around for just a little bit and then she all on her own without a single tear, without screaming, without screeching, without whining, without anything guys. She goes to sleep all on her own and that is my end goal for you. I want your baby to go to sleep on their own as well and I want you parents, you sleep deprived poor parents, I want you to get your full good night's rest as well. So my sleep training process is going to be broken down into three parts. Part one, which is this video, is going to be talking about how to get the baby to sleep through the night. Part two will discuss how to get the baby to self-soothe and sleep on his or her own and in his or her own crib. Part three is just going to be a simple Q&A where I will discuss with you some of the challenges and the obstacles I faced on my journey to sleep training Samara and I'll be answering some of the common questions that might come to your mind. Also, if you have any questions about this part, just comment below and I will personally answer it for you and I will also feature those questions and answers in my part three video. So the reason why I broke it down into three parts is because that's just how it worked out with us and our family. Instead of trying to get Samara to sleep through the night and self-soothe and sleep in the crib without me being present in the room, it was just all too much and we couldn't do it. So we had to break it down. First, I wanted her to learn how to sleep through the night. Then we tackled the issue of self-soothing and getting her to sleep all on her own. Let's tackle the first question. At what age are babies ready to sleep through the night? If there are moms out there who, did, who say that, oh man, my baby started sleeping through the night at two days old. They are lying, guys. That is not true. No baby is going to be sleeping through the night before four months. And some do between four to six months, some at eight to 10, and some even 10 to 12, and some even beyond that. So don't expect your baby to sleep through the night the first week that they're born. It's just not gonna happen. So wait it out. The first three months are usually like the fourth trimester of pregnancy anyways. So that's the time that you just bond with your baby and you know, you stay with your baby and you're, that's not the time to get them to sleep 10, 11 hours at night. So Samara started sleeping through the night when she was 10 months old. She started to show me patterns of having a consistent schedule. She was on a consistent eating, sleeping, and pooping schedule, so it made it easier. And I felt like at 10 months, she was ready. What I mean by ready is that Samara was ready at 10 months to give up her night feeds. So the number one thing that will help your baby sleep through the night is to eliminate night feedings. How do you determine if your baby is ready to give up night feeds? Simple. You ask your baby's pediatrician or doctor and ask them if your baby's ready to give up night feeds and ready to sleep through the night. If your doctor gives you an okay, then we can start the sleep training process. So at 10 months, Samara was still waking up once a night to eat. Once I got an okay from my doctor, I decided to eliminate her night feeds. So there are two ways you can go about it. Either you can do it cold turkey or you can do the gradual method. So the cold turkey method is where you completely eliminate nursing or bottle. Gradual method is basically you're going to um, give them less and less milk over the course of a few weeks. 
and that method will take longer versus the cold turkey method. I decided to go with the cold turkey method. How do you decide which method to go for? That depends entirely on your baby's temperament. If your baby has a high temperament, go for the gradual method. If your baby has a low temperament, the baby's easy going, go for the cold turkey method. Remember guys, the whole goal of this sleep training process is that you want to make this as easy as possible for your little one. Samara alhamdulillah has a low temperament. She gets used to things really easily. She's a very easy go, happy go lucky baby. So I decided to do the cold turkey method with her and it worked. Within three days, within three days of me eliminating milk, she started sleeping through the night. And so one night I decided, okay, no more, no more. I'm not gonna give her milk when she wakes up. Instead, I'm going to rock her back to sleep. So one night she goes to sleep, she wakes up at like 3 a.m. I go into her room, I hold her, and obviously she's expecting me to give her milk because that's what she's used to, but this time I didn't give her any milk. So she was kind of like, you know, being fussy about it, and she's like, Mom, I want milk. She can't really talk, but you know, through her body language, she was saying, Mom, I want milk. So what I did, I just rocked her back to sleep. I rocked her, I soothed her, I calmed her, and it took about 45 minutes for her to calm down and actually fall asleep. So she was capable of falling asleep without milk. And once she fell asleep, I put her back in her crib. And 30 minutes later, I hear, way, way. She's awake again. So then I go into her room, I pick her up, but I rocked her back to sleep again. I did not cave in. That's really important. If you're going to start this process, you cannot cave in. You can't be like, okay, one day I'll give her milk and the next day I won't. One day I'll give her milk, next day. You have to be consistent with it. That goes for any sleep training method. Whichever method you decide to do, you have to be consistent, guys. So I decided I put my foot down that no more milk, that means no more milk. When she woke up 30 minutes later, I put her back to sleep, but this time it didn't take 45 minutes. She was asleep within 30 30 minutes and I put her down again. One hour later, I hear wee wee and she's awake again. So that happened a few times for the first night where she woke up, but every time, like the amount it took for her to go back to sleep with rocking. Uh, decreased. The next day, day number two, she woke up again in the middle of the night. I went into her room, I picked her up and I did the whole thing again. I just rocked her back to sleep. But this time something miraculous happened guys. When I put her to sleep and I went back to sleep, she didn't wake up again. So the first night she woke up a lot. Second night she only woke up once. That's it. And the third night, can we get some drum roll? <laughs> third night, nothing. She slept through the night. So, mashallah, alhamdulillah, like alhamdulillah, 100 times. So alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, it only took me three days to fully sleep train Samara and she was sleeping through the night. It might take you longer than three days, it might take you long, um, less than three days. It just all depends on your baby and your baby's temperament. There's my trick, guys. My trick was to eliminate night feedings and that was the magic potion that worked and she slept through the night. So if your kid is waking up in the middle of the night to feed, try this method and see if it works. Some of the other tips that I want to mention to you is that I always have white noise playing in her room so that way outside noise does not come in and she doesn't get disturbed by that. Another thing is I darken her room even for nap time and bedtime. So I have blackout curtains. You can buy blackout curtains or you can get blinds to like you know black out the room really helps to have like the room darkened also make sure of the temperature an ideal temperature for babies is between 68 degree, fair, degrees Fahrenheit to 72 degrees Fahrenheit which may seem a little bit chilly for us adults but for babies it's the ideal temperature the other thing make sure that the baby has an overnight diaper so make sure the baby is comfortable in every aspect and then try this method of eliminating feeds and just be patient guys because in the beginning it's going to be hard like i said the first day i thought it was going to be never ending constantly having to wake up and go into her room and try to rock her to sleep it was really hard it was so hard that i ended up waking my husband up i'm like yo bro i can't do this by myself this is too much like come help me so he came over a few times to like rock her back to sleep and and then I came over a few times to rock her back to sleep because like you can't do it alone so especially for the nursing woman like 
send in the dads because dads can do this like wonderful thing where they can put the baby back to sleep you know why because they don't smell like food you smell like food to the baby so it's easier especially if you're nursing send the dad in let the dad do the work and you get some rest too so take turns doing this guys my number one number one tip would be to be patient because this is not going to be like a one day trick it's not going to work like miraculously you, you're going to have to put in some effort and like I said with high temperament babies you're going to gradually do this with Samara it was easy because she's an easygoing baby but if your baby's not easygoing take it even slow because the whole purpose of the sleep training is for our children to feel at ease we don't want any shed we don't want any tears from them we want them to sleep through the night without a single shed of tears so do this method but do it gradually do it cold turkey whichever way you do just be patience guys so there might be times where your baby's going to wake up in the middle of the night after they're fully sleep trained and if that's the case make sure make sure you rock them back to sleep do not under any circumstance give them the milk i remember this one time where she woke up and she just would not go back to sleep and this was way after she was fully sleep trained and my husband's like uh sidra do you want to like give her milk i'm like bruh do not say those words like shh do not say the M word. Nope, not gonna happen. So I was like, we're gonna, we're gonna like do it. And alhamdulillah, she did rock. She was able to rock back to sleep. Even the babies might still wake up after getting sleep trained. It's growth spurts or sleep regression, teething, growth spurt, illness. It could be a million reasons, but whatever the reason is, rock them back to sleep at this point. Do not nurse them. Do not give them formula. Stick to your ground. Basically, what we have done in the sleep training is that we have eliminated one sleep association, which is milk, and we have replaced it with another sleep association, which is rocking, getting rocked to sleep. And in part two, I will discuss with you how to eliminate the rocking sleep association altogether and get them to just sleep on their own in the crib. If your baby's not sleeping in the crib but the baby's co-sleeping, even for those parents, this can, this can work. So if you're used to nursing your baby to sleep, instead of nursing them to sleep, rock them to sleep and then put them next to you. Don't just, you know, nurse them to sleep because it's convenient. I know there's going to be times when it's going to be hard, but yeah, just stick through it, guys. Okay guys, that's all I have for today. I hope you guys enjoyed my video and benefited from it. If you did benefit from it, please share it with other moms and dads who might be struggling right now who are sleep deprived as well. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. If you have subscribed to Zakala here, thank you so much. And that's it guys. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Peace. Bye bye. Bye bye.